Um, I'm not really anticipating that they're going to use these upper ones a whole lot. But, you know, okay, let's be honest. They're going to sleep in them. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Chris with Rockin' 8 Farm and it's time for another little bit of a chicken video, I guess. So <clears throat> I've got, currently I have 27 chickens, 25 laying hens and two roosters in that chicken coop. When I built the chicken coop, I just built it out of pieces that I had, you know, two by fours that I had. And I had some nice long dimensional lumber, um, but I built it just not necessarily to spec. I just knew I wanted a lot of square footage in it and I knew I wanted a lot of linear footage on the roosting bars. I built it for what I knew I was going to have at the time, which was roughly 25 chickens. Well, now we're going to be closer to 55 because I've got another 27 chicks or uh, I guess we can call them pullets and baby roos over here in this grow up pen that I've, I just showed you guys a while back. And um, what I need to do to get that chicken coop ready to double the size of the flock is add roosting bars, add nesting boxes and kind of reconfigure the coop just a little bit. So that's one of the things that we're gonna be working on right now. Um, I built a new nesting box out of a dresser drawer or a desk drawer that I had laying around. I just put a divider in it and threw a lip on the front of it and it's a great double nesting box. I've already got the triple nesting box in there. I've got the buckets up on top that they literally never ever use. So I'm probably just gonna do away with those bu uh, buckets and then put the two new nesting boxes in here. That'll take me up to a total of five nesting boxes for 50 hens, which is probably not enough, but right now I have 27 hens using three. So, you know, I mean, if I have to find a place to add more nesting boxes, I will. I may just leave the buckets up there and if they decide to use them, great. If not, oh well. Um, Cause that's one of the things I've discovered about chickens anyhow. If you give them one nesting box, they will all use the same nesting box. If you give them four more nesting boxes, they will still all use the same nesting box. It seems like 90% of our eggs are found in one box and then we'll find the rest of them in the other two and some on the ground. So I'm giving them five very nice nesting boxes and then we're gonna start looking at what we need to do to add more roosting space um, and just start getting this coop ready for when these guys hit you know, right around week 15, 16, 17, and they've got some size on them and they're ready to go in with their with their big sisters. Um, so let's go inside the coop and take a look. So before we go in the coop, I will show you this real quick. This is what I was talking about. Just a desk drawer that um, I put a divider in the middle of it and then I just put this little lip on the front to hold the bedding in. So ample space, it's roughly one by one by one. And um, it just, it was free. It didn't cost me anything to put together that nesting box. Now in the coop, we have our girls with their bad habits. I'm pretty sure they laid a while ago. They just like to lay in the nesting boxes and I have to come kick them out every once in a while. But that's the other nesting box that I have. That was a uh, cabinet, like an old kitchen cabinet that I was able to divide into three parts. So um, I'm gonna take that nesting box and move it over here, put the other one right alongside it. And then I've got the roosting bars there, one, two, three. We're gonna try to come one, two, three across this way. Um, so it still leaves a lot of space for all of the birds to jump down into without any fear of knocking themselves unconscious on another set of roosting bars. Got some work to do and uh, we'll see how this goes. The other thing too, that, that nesting box right now is right in the way of, um, I wanna put two more doors out the back of this coop that will go to two additional runs. So the chickens will have a total of four runs that I rotate them between instead of just the two that I have now. You can see I have a door there. I've also got a door over there that's not open right now. And that door goes out to this paddock. So I wanna put two more paddocks on the back and um, that nesting box is right where I need to put the doors for that, those, those, two, those two runs. So this is something that needed to be done anyhow, and we'll just kind of get to it and see where we end up. All right, so have y'all ever noticed that sometimes when you're working on a project, it just kind of takes its own direction? <laughs> so I put that little nesting box in that I told you that I had just built. I showed it to you on top of the little guineas feed cover. Curious chickens. That's the nesting box that was over here. We moved it over here, 
And then I had a couple of drawers. They never used those buckets. And I was just like, eh, I mean, I know they're gonna get up on top of this thing anyhow, because that's what chickens do. And I just didn't feel like building a nice 45 degree cover for it and stuff. So I just threw a couple of drawers up there and threw some bedding material in there. If they wanna get up there and lay eggs, that's fantastic. And if that's the case, I've got like basically nine nesting boxes. Um, I'm not really anticipating that they're going to use these upper ones a whole lot, but, you know, okay, let's be honest. They're going to sleep in them, <laughs> but we'll do what we can to discourage that. It was just, it was a space. I thought, okay, how can I contain some bedding on top of this space? And there you go. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that, uh, I'm hoping they figure it out pretty quick and start laying some eggs over here. I'm, I'll probably see if I can find a couple that they drop in places I don't want them and then I'll put them in the nesting boxes and just mark them to let me know that those eggs are there to uh, let them know where they're supposed to lay. So that's it for nesting boxes. Now we just got to figure out what we're going to do about increasing the amount of linear footage we have for roosting space. Hey y'all, it's a new day here in uh, chicken land over at Rockinate Farm. I did all my knee could handle yesterday, and, and now I'm back out trying to get some more stuff done today. The beard looks a little funny. I'm doing a little burning out here as well. Um, I've got a big burn pit that's not too far from the chicken coop, so I'm trying to kill a couple of birds with one stone. Now, it's pretty noisy in here, and I'm trying to talk, but what I really wanted to show you all was... Apparently, the chickens didn't have any problem finding their new uh, nesting boxes. They're a little peeved that I'm in here talking, but this is very encouraging to me. So I'll check back with you in a second when it's a little quieter. Well, y'all, here is what we ended up with. Those are the three roosting bars that have always been in this coop. These are the three new roosting bars. <clears throat> Before I get all the comments, yes, I know that any chickens that decide that they want to roost right there are probably going to get pooed on by the ones that are up here. I'm aware of that. Um, on my lower roosting bars, the chickens really just use them to get up. The two roosting bars on the top there, literally all 27 of my current chickens roost on those two bars and nobody roosts on that bar. They just use it to get up onto the top two bars. I'm assuming the same thing is going to happen over here. So two bars up top and these bars are actually considerably longer than those are. So if 27 chickens roost happily there, I think an additional 27 chickens will be able to roost very happily here. They'll just use that bar to get up, I'm hoping. And <clears throat> nesting boxes are down over here. Now I know another thing I might get comments on is hopefully the chickens don't hurt themselves when they're getting down and blah, blah, blah. Well, <clears throat> so when they're roosting on these bars, but they're going out that door, they all fly down in this direction and then they run back out that way and nobody's ever gotten hurt um, now this door obviously is kind of underneath that last roosting bar there but the fact is y'all the square footage that i have that is not encompassed by roosting bars or nesting boxes is probably larger than most people's coops i mean i'm looking at mm, 10 by 8, 80 square feet of um, space on the floor of this chicken coop that doesn't have a roosting bar above it or a nesting box above it. So there's, there's plenty of room for them to jump down off of these um, roosting bars and, and get out the doors. Um, so yeah, that's it. I, I mean, I would have to say that by and large, the coop is ready for the new girls to get a little bit bigger and join the rest of the, the flock here. So <clears throat> that's uh, that's really all, all I've got for now, to be honest with y'all. Uh, I think, you know, recently you saw a video about the upgrades I made inside the chick's new area. These are the upgrades that I've made here. So I think as soon as they get big enough where they can kind of fend for themselves, I'll sneak in here at night and try introducing them. And um, <clears throat> then I'll do some more upgrades to the, uh, the grow out area or the brooding pen or the mini coop, whatever we want to call it. And uh, we'll start getting some 
some other poultry going on the farm here. So again, I know the beard looks funny. I just didn't want to singe it when I was burning. So I've got the old mask on. And if you tuck the beard up, it's a little easier to put inside the mask. Um, that's really all I've got for you all right now. Uh, so I guess until I see you all again, I just want you all to be happy and live healthy.